Okay, brothers and sisters, we're here going on or working into the eighth day uh, of celebration of our feast. Okay, as you all know, last Sabbath was the Feast of Dedications, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, and we do count that. So, so those who understand how we count, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's going to be eight complete day, complete days, and once this day is over, that will end the Feast of Dedication, sundown to sundown. All right. I want you all to know that uh, we thank you for all your your participation, you brothers and sisters who come through worldwide each Sabbath. Sabbath, we thank you, and we thank you for uh, all the participation in the academy. And I'm going to talk about that going forward because. We are about to embark in a new academy uh, uh, next week. So if you want to be involved, please let us know. But uh, before we go into some questions, I thought that I would take a few questions today. Uh, we weren't able to take any last week, so I'm going to use this time for questions. But before that, let me, all, let, me let you all know where things stand. Uh, we are in uh, what you would call the holiday season. All right, and it's a serious emotional time that plays on most people during this time of year. Why? Because uh, it's about family, it's about coming together, getting time off, and appreciating, uh, usually what we were told, appreciating the blessings that was bestowed upon us and thanking Christ on, uh, on so-called Christmas the day he quote unquote was born according to uh, mainstream media. Outside of that, it's the fiscal time of year where the European, the Western world economy rounds off their fiscal year as far as finances go. It's also a time in which they distract the majority of the population and usually pass some type of bill that, that, that leads to more a restraint and loss of rights on the world population but just going to my original point the fact that this is an emotional instability time of year because why if you're in the truth following the Bible of course you feel left out you have prior memories on Christmas of receiving certain gifts and it, it, it brings back memories good memories of family and things that you've participated with all your life and it's hard to do an emotional detachment altogether uh, based on those memories especially for women but keep in mind uh, the the greater prize the fact that the Bible tells us we can't learn the ways of the heathen and we must abstain from their customs and idolatry we, when it says come out of Babylon, of course, before you, can before you can physically come out of her, you must first mentally come out of her and detach yourself. And don't let that play on your emotions. You're going to hear the music. You're going to see the fanfare. Uh, everywhere you go, you're going to be bombarded with this time of year. But keep in mind, once the ball drops, on December so-called December 31st going into January 1st everyone will snap out of their trance and it will be just like it, ha it, ha it has always been leading to Armageddon and the destruction of that pagan world so keep that in mind alright uh, one thing I wanted to read and I usually do that this time of year we're not going to go into a full lesson on it but I wanted to go into how the uh, Christianity is modern day Babylonian pagan worship the worships of Zeus and there's a scripture that stands out that, that that links directly to the idolatry that's connected with what they call the Christmas tree keep in mind that a mass just looking at the word Christmas a mass is usually what a funeral or a death so in actuality, it's reverse, teaching us to celebrate what they call the death of Christ. You have to realize the Romans 
the Romans killed Christ through crucifixion. Yes, some of our people was rallied up in a frenzy uh, against Christ, but that was prophesied. But all in all, Christ was killed by what we would call, or what you would call, a Roman execution. Israelites, stone, uh, capital death was by stoning. Okay? Romans' capital death was through crucifixion and humiliation. So Christ was killed. And on December 25th, they celebrate what you would call the rise of the Yule child during Saturnalia, which is Satan, Satan's child, Talmuz. Okay? So that's what's being celebrated during this time of year of Saturnalia. And on top of that, they are actually putting, in, put, putting it right in your face that they are celebrating the Romans killing Christ. Christ's mass. Christ's death. But keep in mind, Christ is not dead for us. Christ resurrected. He went into hell, took the keys so that Satan could not control that realm going forward. So that once Christ returned, he can release the souls. And then vengeance on the God of this world, the God of Christmas, and the pagans who, who, who follow him. All right. Let me read this scripture real quick in Jeremiah 10. It's not a long study. We're not going to deal with a long study today. But it's more so a time to refocus based on the, distract, the, the, the distractions we are being bombarded with. Uh, Jeremiah 10 and 1 reads, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Which the, hear, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. O house of Israel. Now these commands in the Bible were to the children of Israel. Why? Because the children of Israel weren't pagan. They aren't pagan. They are not supposed to follow the pagan ways. So the Bible is, is given directives to a chosen people separated from the pagan Gentile world. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, which is a higher. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. When it says be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, it's also speaking of how the, the pagans operate with what you would call the reading of astrology in the stars. And they use this for signs for when they do certain events or what have you. That's what the Gentiles are following. Ultimately, they're following the fallen star, Lucifer. Okay? So it says, Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Then it goes into the customs. For the customs of the people are vain. That means the people are doing these holidays for nothing. They're celebrating Christmas for nothing. There's no benefit spiritually, and God finds no favor in it. For the customs of the people are vain. And then it goes into the, their chief custom. For one cut up the tree out of the forest. That's your Christmas tree. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Now it's showing you, the Bible is telling you what customs we are supposed to abstain from. You're not supposed to cut a tree. You're not supposed to have a tree. And then it says in a fourth verse, they deck it with silver and with gold. See? The Bible says, learn not the way of the heathen. Their customs are vain. Israel is not supposed to participate in this pagan ritual. It's idolatry. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born. And then the Bible tells us, Be not afraid of them in the fifth verse. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Why? Because we fear the Babylonians when they forced our people to worship the tree during the time of the virgin child, 
Talmud. Okay, which was actually nine months from what you would call Easter. But it's not Easter, it's the goddess of star when she was supposed to have been impregnated by the devil. That's the child being worshipped. And they claimed after Nimrod died, because the child came through Nimrod first, that a tree erected over his grave. And that the spirit of Nimrod, incarnated as Tammuz, was in the tree. See, that's the true worships. That's what we're really looking at here. So they use Christ as a cover. And Christ told us, Christ gave us through the Holy Spirit, the epistles that says, No marvel that Satan himself appears as an angel of light. Okay. So so no marvel that if, if Satan appears as Christ today, that his ministers are also ministers of the devil. And these are they who are in position to push Christmas, paganism, Sunday worship. Yes, they're what you would call satanic pagan priests. A lot of them unknowingly. But it's it's clear what we're going what, what what we're showing you here. It's paganism. And the height of their paganism happens this time of year. And it plays on your emotions. It works on you. And it's on purpose. It's pressure to move you in and turn from your God. Now, this is what the Most High said to Israel. This is what we must follow. Now, the other pagan nations who decide they don't want to follow the God of Israel, this command is not to them. They, they're supposed to be pagan. That's what they do. They worship Satan. But for the Gentiles who follow Christ, they will follow the, the right Christ and reject the way of the heathen. Now, like I said, we're going into the end of the Feast of Dedications. I have a feast that we are about, we are about to attend. But without any further ado, I'm here. And I can answer a few questions before this is done. All right. And then I have a few announcements. And then after that, after starting next week, it will be the Sabbath as normal. All right. So let me open up the chat for you all one moment and we can answer as many questions as we can. I, weren't, I wasn't able to answer any last week, so I'm going to try to answer as many as I can today. Whatever the questions are, I'll be open to answer them. All right. All right, let me put the chat at eye's length. All right. The chat is open, brothers and sisters, so if you have any questions, uh, shoot. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here, all right, I'm going to, now let me put this out there right now. If there's any questions, about, well, I'm going to answer every question. I said I open it, so I open it for any questions, so I'm not going to say what questions not to, to ask. So hold on, let me pause it so that I can make sure I'm not skipping people. One moment. Others are preparing for the feast, so, and, uh, you know, I said that I know we have a lot of people waiting, so why not just come in and tell everyone what's going on, what we're going to do going forward, and answer some questions. So, let me go to the first question here, one by one. Can you please explain the mystery concerning Christ and the church relating to husband and a wife? Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. Good question. Let me go there with you. One moment. Okay, let me read it so that others can follow. Ephesians 5 and 32. All right. All right. When it says 5 and 30, let me start at 30 because that's the key that breaks down the mystery. 
for we are the members of his body his flesh and his bones that's the 30th verse for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be one flesh this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church now when it says this is a great mystery because Christ is Christ the Holy Spirit is relating husband and wife to those that are baptized and marry Christ okay we must leave the things that that ruled and controlled us in the world or how we were brought up and separate ourselves and come to Christ and marry Christ so he's actually showing a parallel between husband and wife and the relationship between Christ and those that have been baptized into the church all right so that's paralleling that it's the same uh, 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 scenario it's the same spirit in which we are one with Christ one body all right let me get the next question Shabbat Shalom Elder this is a scripture in Jasher 24 and 40 that says Rebecca was 10 years old when she was given to Isaac is this correct or a mistranslation no that was correct she was 10 years old when they agreed to give her to Isaac but she was not 10 years old when they consummated all right so let's make this clear they were there there were arranged marriages back then it wasn't like now okay some people were matched up since an early age to be married later down the line so just because they were to be married or or to come together for the rest of their life starting from her age of 10 they did not consummate at that age okay one moment uh and that was uh kp 2007 good question the next question is here i said i'm going to be open to any questions so i've emailed elder delcraft but i still have not heard from anyone i'm still trying to join the academy but i had no communication from no one what can i do to, to be able to be registered in the December 21st class well that's two separate things we have to make sure Dell get with you and we're going to do that so that's going to answer that the second mirror 54 you can do this now since you're on your computer open up your email send an email to gathering as one that's the number one at aol.com gathering as one the number one at aol.com title it mirror 54 Academy and say that you want to be in the Academy and you ask this question and I guarantee you you will have a response uh, within a few days well before the Academy begins Sunday and we will see you next Sunday in the Academy okay next question mr. success 99 interesting name How, how do one respond to the claim that the Greeks, Romans, and Edom are three di different nations and not all of them are Edom? Well, that is a good question, but you have to keep in mind that there is uh, uh, a distinction between Grecians and Greeks. Now, the best definition I can you, you can find is in the uh, Zondervan Bible Dictionary Zondervan Z-O-N-D-E-R-V-A-N the Zondervan Bible Dictionary tells us when you look at Greeks it says Greeks are to be distinguished between Greeks and Grecians you understand so there's there are to be distinguished they're not the same 
it says uh, Greeks are Hellenist Jews who made Greek their tongue and often adopted Greek customs the same as if I was writing a letter to someone in Philadelphia or wh whichever state you're from or city you're from and you were living in America and all the statues and pictures that one would have when, when it comes to their memories of America is George Washington or just white people in general does that mean the letter I wrote, I wrote to you relates to George Washington because he's an American and you are an American but there's a distinction between the people that come from George Washington and you isn't there yes you may be called a black American or Latino American or whatever your persuasion you understand so you have to realize just because the term Greek is there it doesn't relate to white people white people were called Grecians the same way you really don't have to put a term on a white American like you would put on a black American a white person is not called a white American in America they're called Americans well white people from Greece Greece were called Grecians all right black people who were Hellenist who practiced Greek religion and and for and, and actually left off from their customs were called Greeks so it should be it's, it's distinct it's distinguished and that's why Paul says there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek because you had our people who were Jews or Israelites uh, 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 actually uh, going against their own brothers because their brothers were acting like the other nations acting like the white Grecians you understand and Paul says there's no difference between you two okay they're just acting out uh, based on how they were taught and I know that Christians all day long and I know Christians all day long you know with that problem use that scripture to say it doesn't make a difference what race you are when they're totally misinterpreting that scripture Paul wasn't saying that all right uh, even when it comes to Romans a matter of fact did you know that Paul even had Roman citizenship even Josephus had Roman citizenship so the same example just because it says Romans doesn't mean that these are white people there were Jews who were scattered in Rome there was Jews that were scattered in Ephesus and the example I can give you when you go to Peter's one and one let me go there real quick and a matter of fact read Acts the second chapter where it tell you there were Jews devout men out of every nation and it names all the places Israel was scattered and in Acts the second chapter in Rome and all that alright so these letters were to the Israelites that were scattered into these places when you read um, uh, Peter's one and one that reads Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered through Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia Bithynia See, these, our people were scattered in all these different nations, even European places. Uh, when you go to uh, James 1 and 1, let me go there. James 1 and 1, a servant of the Most High Ahia, and Yeshua, anointed, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. So these letters were going to Israelites that were scattered in these particular lands so all the churches that you see that Paul was writing to were Israelite churches okay now hope that answered your questions in a nutshell all right I'm being flagged for the feast that we're about to have in a couple of minutes so so I'm going to answer a few more uh,
uh, Ominous Judah. Can I verify the book of Jubilees with through scriptures? Of course you can. Uh, you can go to Ezra, the 14th chapter, 2nd Ezra, the 14th chapter, where it tells you that he gave Moses the secrets of the times. So when you look at Jubilees in, seven, in sevens, that's the secrets of the times, the Jubilees, which is a numbers of sevens leading to the end of what we call time. All right. Um, how how do you get the two witnesses as Israel and Judah and not Enoch, Enoch and Elijah? Well, that is a good question. All right. Number one. All right. The two witnesses that witnessed Christ's resurrection, I mean, Christ's uh, life and warned him of the uh, of the crucifixion to come right before he went into Jerusalem was during the transfiguration Moses and Elijah okay I know a lot of people uh, look at the two that was translated Elijah was translated and Enoch is translated as the two witnesses but the two witnesses is right there in the New Testament that witnessed and gave witness to Christ before Christ was crucified and told him that this would he would you know his death would finally happen once he go into Jerusalem okay so who is that Moses and Elijah two witnesses from the third heaven that is not to be mixed up with the, the philosophy that the Christian churches are putting out there that the two witnesses is going to come prophesy from Israel which which is a lie that was created through the Jesuits to distract people all right and and, and revelations are not speaking of two of those guys coming in the earth and being crucified why because it give you a time time and a dividing of times or the three and a half days which is a time period of a consummation between the fall of Israel and the coming of Christ that's a time period it's not speaking of they're dying and laying in the street dead as a witness to the whole earth for three days three and a half days uh, uh physical days the prophets coming on the earth and getting crucified it's not speaking of that so that's how you get the two witnesses are judah and israel all right because they are the witness they are the ones that that's dealing with the valley of the dry bones lying dead for a period of time until the coming of our lord and savior all right. Uh, what's next here? Shalom. I was uh, I live in Atlanta and I'm looking to get baptized. How do I go about it? Do me a favor. Send us an email and we will allocate someone to 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 actually help you with that. Uh, Elder lawyer will be overseeing the whole down south area, that region. And we have people appointed. But Elder lawyer is the person that's over. Uh, those regions so you will be receiving a call from elder lawyer send an email gathering as one at aol.com okay I can answer a few more questions and then there's the feast all right all right okay here's a good question can a divorced person remarry well you have to realize that this is not what you would call a uh, a simple question and the reason why is because uh, it's not that cut and dry because there's different circumstances um, let me give you an example and like I said this is Someone would need to talk to you about your scenario to see what scenario it is. What's going on? You understand? Because some people is looking to commit adultery and want to have an out to do so. So no, you can't do that. All right?
Follow me in Corinthians real quick here. In 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, right? Now, now keep in mind, right, that when a person separates from their husband or wife, they're supposed to reconcile. They're not supposed to be seeking outside of themselves. All right? But if you take the proper steps, there will be a re reconciliation. That's what you should aim for at all times. That's that's the purpose of the Most High, to keep the two together. All right? Let me read this. Let's go from an angle where usually when people get the truth, there's some level of division or separation based on the fact that one believe and the other don't want to deal with it. So let, let, let's do from that perspective real quick. Especially this time of year when, you know, there's much conflict. If one want to celebrate Christmas, the other don't, or whatever the case is. Let me read it. And to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. That's period. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Crystal clear. Or be reconciled to her husband. Crystal clear. And let not the husband put away his wife. Crystal clear. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which have an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. That's crystal clear. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God have called us to grace. Now that's the only time grace applies in that scenario. That means you've done everything you can, you've done what's right, and this person just departs from you. Alright? And there's no place of reconciliation because they don't want it. Then, only then, can grace apply. But outside of that, the scriptures say, what, what the Most High put together, let no man put us under. If you got someone you're struggling with who don't believe or whatever the case is, well, as long as they're willing to be with you and not stopping you from serving the Most High, you cannot put that person away. And like I said, there's so many different other scenarios because you have people who say, well, listen, there's things that I've dealt with. Uh, I'm separated from a person that, you know, once I got the truth, I realize I'm already committed. So there's a lot of different scenarios that's not the same. It's not a, it's, 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 it's a case by case base, a scenario here. It's a case by case basis. You have situations where people did things before they had the truth and feel they are accountable for their mistakes in the past. So those things have to be reconciled to some degree so that you can have a conscience to what's going forward and not feel that you're sinning. So there's a lot of different scenarios. Like I said, it's not just cut and dry. The key thing is staying together, reconciliation, and dealing with your union. That's the key. All right, but like I said, there's different scenarios. But when it comes to being under grace as if you're doing everything you're supposed to do according to the most high and this person just go not dealing with you well you're not under bondage in that case all right 
Okay, I can answer two more questions and then uh, I'll answer more questions after the class next week and I'll make my announcements. Hey, what you think is the significance of the Prince visit in relation to Bible prophecy? When you say the Prince visit, I, what do you mean? The Prince visit, what Prince? I'm seeing videos on YouTube giving scriptures of the real relocation on Jerusalem and we should return. Well, I can't say much to you on that. All right. Um, we've said what we've said. We put the scriptures out there and I can't stop people from putting out videos that don't have nothing to do with our church. So at the end of the day, you have to decide what you're going to do. You understand? I'm not going to sit here and try to stop people from doing whatever they feel is what they need to do. If there's some videos out there and there's some people putting some stuff out there and you believe in them and you trust them, uh, go for it. But I'm not dealing with it. It's a bunch of madness. I know it's madness. So, but it's up to you. Uh, does the feast end tonight or tomorrow night? The feast is from sundown tonight to the sundown tomorrow night. So tomorrow night the feast will be done when the sun goes down. All right. Hold on. I can just answer a few more. Let me pause it. Uh, when we get into the kingdom of heaven, will there be people still married or will be able to have children? Because I know the scripture says, yes, there will, there will people will be married. There will be people married and you still be able to have children. I tell you that in Isaiah 7, okay? The people that is saying marry, neither you marry or given in the marriage are those that are resurrected. If you're resurrected, you're like the angels. So there's no need to have children for those, those that are resurrected. But if you're on the earth and you haven't been changed, then yes, you will be able to, you will have children. All right. Uh, T. Ray 76. What was wrong with my question? Um... I didn't see your question. Let's see. T Ray 76. I, I, I don't see your question, T Ray 76. I'm looking at all the questions from the first question. And the first question I see under T Ray 76 is what you're asking now. What was wrong with your question? Um. Prince William and his wife are currently visiting the U.S. I think they're just doing what they do. They're normal rounds. I, I can't speculate. But th th he have nothing to do with prophecy. Okay, he's a Roman. He's an Edomite that's operating in, in his family's power, the children of Satan. But outside of that, I don't know what he's doing in the U.S. I live in Belize and want to join the academy. But the method of payment I cannot do. Is there any other options? If you have any questions about the Academy, send an email to gatheringas1 at AOL.com. We'll let you know your options with that. Okay, there are options for that. Is Cat Slew the 25th? Which there was, if Cat Slew the 25th in which there was a sacrifice to idols different from December 25th? Yes. Well, well, sort of the same because don't forget the 10th month and the 25th day is December. So it is in relation under paganism. Absolutely. All right. And I'm talking about under paganism. 
they use that all right but it's different when you look at the true purpose of December or what you would call the 10th month and the 25th day it's really it's supposed to be a celebration to do what to dedicate the temple back to the Most High. All right. Now, last but not least, any other questions? Send an email to gathering as one at aol.com, and I'll be back next week with a very, very uh, good lesson we're going into, and it's actually going to speak about um, uh, going into uh, the wilderness and the scriptures on the wilderness. And I'm going to say this, brothers and sisters, I know there's people out there telling you that you should go to Jordan. You should ignore that person or these people. You're going to have some people that tell you to go to Israel. You can go there if you want. But according to the scriptures, and I'm going to go there next week, when Christ returns, that's going to be in the same condition as Babylon. It's going to be toast. Well before Christ come back. All right. So. My suggestion, my suggestions is those that are under the church, that's operating with the church, go under the guidance of the elders with the church. Those that are not with the church and just looking to do whatever they want to do and just trying to feel their way through, then, hey, there's not much I can say for that. All right. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say real quick before we go into our feast uh, is that... Um, for those who want to link in, we do have a GOCC network. Come to our page, gatheringofchrist.org, and you're going to see a lot of work is being done. News articles are being placed up there on a regular. And uh, it's going to be a way in which we can connect with you all once they totally put a clamp on YouTube and other outlets. So that's going to be a main, uh, until we can't do it anymore, that, that page is going to stay there. So that we can actually, eventually we're going to have all our videos and things up there where you can actually go there opposed to going to YouTube. Because we know soon all of those things will be legislated uh, out of out of existence. Uh, the next thing is, if you have a business you want to advertise, whatever on GOCC Network, or you want to get your ideas out there, uh, send us an email so that we can know what you want to do to help you with your business and, or whatever you have uh, to offer. Uh, the email is gathering as one at AOL.com. If you want to join the academy next week, we got a new academy. We're going into the truth about creation. And uh, we're going to go into some of the theories that the world have used to try to make people believe that uh, the world came through evolution. We're going to show you that the evolution that they're speaking of can only be resolved through the understanding of the Bible. So I'll be going into that next Sunday. Uh, uh, in, in the uh, Hebrew and Bible Academy first week. Also, it doesn't matter. If you were in past academies, it doesn't matter. You probably want to get into this one. A lot of information is going to come out during this next three months. And we have added a history class with the Hebrew. So now you have your history class so that it will help you resolve the understanding of biblical history. Key points leading from our uh, the time of Israel up into the time of our current day captivity. So uh, a lot of that will be in the mix for your next uh, academy. So if you want to participate again, send an email to gathering as one, the number one at AOL.com. All right. With that, I wish you all a great feast for the Feast of Dedications from, from sundown tonight to sundown tomorrow. Bless you. Uh, without any further ado, we're going to begin our feast here, and uh, we'll be talking with you soon. Any questions, again, send an email to as one the number one, at AOL.com. Kwam Yasha Allah, praise the Most High, and I want to put this out there also, that I found out just on the news, and I'm sure, uh, uh, I'm sure Shapat, formerly known as Mark, will put this out there next week in the Hebrew and Bible News. Uh, I noticed this December the 25th, the UN, the world body that really controls the Western world and the, the United States, have start, they're starting to push a new legislation uh, that will mean uh, 
the seizing of guns. So they're going to push this legisl legislation while everyone is distracted and 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 really, uh, you know, probably pigging out during so-called Christmas. Usually that's when they pass their laws. But they have this new bill they're going to pass that, that's going to mean eventually the seizing of the arms within the United States. State. So we know that something soon it will be coming. So they're going to, they, and it's the world body that's pushing this. And I seen a video, you probably all want to see it. They have been censoring this video all throughout YouTube. And it's this video called, uh, I think it's called, Let's Talk About Sandy Hook. Or it's time we talk about Sandy Hook. Which is really the campaign they use with the fake shooting and claiming that children were killed. They use that to spearhead the campaign to eventually take the guns. We know that after they take the guns, then it won't be too long before they bring in the foreign troops. Now, I'm not saying, listen, this is Bible prophecy, but I'm just putting you into the news so that you'll know, understand how close we are. Uh, the Bible says, and Christ told us, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, flee into the mountains, flee into the wilderness. So the sign that you must be looking for in particular, and hopefully you don't see see the sign when it's too late, is when your military is more, as much as uh, prevalent or, 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 or as much present as your police within your cities, you know that it's probably too late. All right? So I'm just putting it out there to let you all know what's, in the news what's going on and how does that relate to prophecy each week we go into the news with the hebrew and bible academy we go with elder lawyer with the hebrew he's going to cut the hebrew in half and do part hebrew part history then shapat formerly known as mark and i go into the current news i have no idea what news articles he's going to go into but usually we go into it and there was some, there was a good piece uh, with the news in which we were speaking of how they're bringing Bill Cosby down and they're going to liquidate his assets before probably getting rid of him altogether. That's what they do. When you sign a pact with the devil, you understand, they build you up to destroy you, then they liquidate your assets so that your family cannot take your finances and continue a legacy or continue aspirations you would have towards helping the people. Usually when a person get old, they, you know, they begin to think about, you know, their time, the, the time they had on earth and what can they do knowing that they, they will soon be gone. Mm -hmm. Bill Cosby have a lot of money, a lot of prestige. He also has a lot of influence. And through that, he have a lot of ideas and I know he have much regret. And through that, he probably would want to use his money to help us. But that is not going to happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen because they have a dossier as 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 long as as a city block on every entertainer. And when it's time, they liquidate. So you're gonna the next thing you're gonna see is class action suits. People signing it together, and usually the person over the class action suit is someone that's part of the trustees of. The person's account or or a state they're looking to take so bill cosby is finished and we went into that last week uh how they do it and as a matter of fact I may, I may upload that video just so y'all can see what we be going into on uh some of these academies but again we're going to do the news and then after the news next week we're going to go into creation and and we're going to tear down the evolution conspiracy. With that, shalom. Have a happy and blessed feast of dedications. Stay strong. Stay in the spirit. And abstain from pagan Babylonian Christmas. Shalom. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Dell and, and everyone that's that, that that has helped us up until this point. All right. Happy Feast of Dedication. Shalom. Stay tuned for Elder and Brother Gabar.